So the topic of this talk is presenting statistics. It's presenting and, well, really understanding statistics in social media. Okay, one of the most evil men of the 20th century gave a... Well, before that, let me backtrack. You know, I don't know how many of you have heard the quote, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics from Mark Twain. How many of you have you heard it before? One of my favorites. Yes, and one of the more infamous quotes. One million, the death of one man is a tragedy. The death of millions is a statistic. That's often attributed to the most evil, one of the most evil men of the 20th century, Joseph Stalin. Well, basically, one other way to phrase that is that statistics need to be supplemented with other information to make it meaningful to individuals. Come on in. I just got started. You didn't miss much. We'll just walk in front of the camera then and sit over here. Okay. Okay. Glad you could make it. I mean, this is just the first slide, so I talked about two famous quotes about statistics. One from Mark Twain, the other from Joseph Stalin. One's more disturbing than the others, I know. But everything, everything is numbers. You know, you, you, I mean, ESPN, they have a huge statistics department. They go to the American Statistical Association conference recruiting people. Um, you know, of course, there's lots of lots of statistics. It was QB at rating, slugging percentage, goals against average, economics, medicine, education. There's lots of examples here. You know. And as long as a statistic is verifiable, you know, that, that you, you can trace the source, it, it is possible to spot a lie if someone is trying to lie with statistics. Okay. I mean, social media is full of bloggers and... You know, there's good ones out there and bad ones. Probably the most famous good one would be Nate Silver from 538.com, who's good at, who got hired by ESPN to blog about sports as well as the elections, like to predict who's going to win. Okay. First, I'll just give a quick review of the types of statistics. I mean, one would just be a simple total or... A total for an individual or an individual or a group and okay so there's also measures th these are called measures of central tendency like what's the most likely outcome you're going to get if you take a random sample from a certain population you're interested in you know you have your mean that's just a simple total up all the data values in a certain data set. Add it up, take the total, divide by the number of observations, and that's your average. That's your statistical average, or we call it the mean. If you rank your observations from highest to lowest, highest to lowest, the observation that would be exactly in the middle is called the median. There are times when that's a better measure of central tendency than the median, than the mean, I mean. Like a famous example would be the University of North Carolina. They did a survey of their of their alumni to find out which of their which of their majors had the highest average or mean the highest mean salary. And, ah, uh, what's going on? Got to plug this in. Okay. Well, the story goes, okay, the story goes that, you know, they looked at each major, find out which, which, 
which of them had the highest average salary or mean salary. Can you guess which one it was? Athletes. Well, that's close. All right, well, what they found was geography. So many of you are asking, why geography? Okay, they went back and looked in the, they went back and looked at the data and, and the list of people in, in that major. And they found out that that indeed was Michael Jordan's major <laughs> at North Carolina. Let's see here, why did this image go down? I'm trying to get this back up on the screen. What happened? Um, well, okay, I mean, another popular measure of central tendency is simply the mode. Like, what observation occurs most frequently in a data set, in a set of data? HP battery alert of all the time. Okay, my computer seems to be having some battery troubles, but I will just keep talking. Okay, so, like, there are many ways to, like, you know, like I said, there are also, in addition to measures of central tendency, there's also measures of spread in the data. I mean, that's also important to know, too. Okay, sorry, I'm just, this is just a bad day for my computer. So, okay, I mean, my, okay, so, like, there's measures, you know, I just simply, uh, a measure of spread would just simply be the range, the difference between the highest observation and the lowest. And then there's also a measure called standard deviation, it's just the average deviation of each observation from the mean. So obviously this just underscores the problem that when you're analyzing, when you're looking at a set of data and you're trying to make sense out of it, it's important to leave no stones unturned. So, okay, okay so that all right, so those are the measures of spread. Obviously, another issue you have to deal with, especially if you're looking from a sample from a population, you have to consider probability. Okay, that's more advanced. Like, what's the probability of observing this, this statistic given this data? That's where, you, that's where people get the margin of error for a certain survey. You know, they say this poll has a margin of error plus or minus 3%. They're putting a probability bound on what, on, on what this say, percentage of support for candidate A is. Okay, so here. Let me see here, go back one. Okay, we talked about that. Okay. So here, right here, we have, here's an example of leaving no stone unturned. This is just like the average life expectancy on this graph, on this axis here. And this is maybe like, like per capita income for the 50 states plus the District of Columbia. This line here, this is just like the best fit straight line for the data. Like this District of Columbia, for some reason it has a big, it has a really high per capita income, but a really low life expectancy, which deviates from the overall trend overall trend you see here with Hawaii having the highest average life expectancy. Okay, this is what we call a regression line, like a best fit straight line. But now if you just look at this graph here, this has all those data points removed. You know, I 
obviously you look at here and you say, okay, we have a nice, a nice straight line. Okay. Well, this R squared linear, that's a regression term saying that only 8% of the variability is accounted for by the relationship in these two these two variables. Okay, I mean, looking at this graph, you can see that they're all, you know, you can see why. There's a lot of spread around this regression line with this really high, with this really big outlier over here. So you can see that you miss a lot of information if you only look at this part. Okay. So here, like, here's some other examples of graph types. Like here, like a bar graph. Okay, it can be good visually, but it's generally not recommended for trends over time. This is like this, is, this dark blue is for product A, this light blue, well, this lighter blue here is product C, this is product B. You can see these trends over time. But if you put it on a line graph to show trends over time, this is better. Like you can see that the product A took a dip at time to and rebounded. Product B went up and down, and product C probably has the best trend upward over time. It starts out low and then goes up. So you can see why a line graph is better for showing trends over time for, well, for if you're comparing several lines. Okay, like here's last year there was a big congressional hearing on Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood and this Congressman Jason Chaffetz, he wanted to show how he wanted to show what, like what was happening, like like Planned Parenthood wasn't doing cancer prevention and screening services while while providing more abortions. So we produced this graph. So can you see why this graph would be misleading? Yeah, because the red line numbers are very close together, but the purple line numbers are yeah. really like like what what is one thing the graph is missing? Y -axis. Oh, yeah, yeah y-axis. And it would need two. Yes. Well, you could display them both. Like here, this yeah. is the exact same data, like looking at from 2006 to 2013, okay, they did have a decrease in cancer screening, but the number of abortions is relatively flat. But the Y was the misleading scale, was on the other line. Yeah, I mean, he made it look like a big X. So... Okay, here's another. Are, are any nurses here? In any nurses here in the, or nursing students? You are. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about the most famous nurse of all time. Yep. Okay, she was working, taking care of patients in the Crimean War, and she needed a way to show like what was causing most of the deaths in the Crimean War in Russia. So she came up with the first pie chart. So right here, these are these red wedges are these red wedges are the are examples of non-battle deaths like from infection or illness. And the blue wedges show the, the number of like deaths right on the battlefield. So, so basically she, you know, 
This was like the first pie chart ever that she used to demonstrate how most of the deaths in the war were coming from infection and disease. So, you know, this is, she was all, among other things, she was also a pioneer in statistics. Okay, you can also express it like according to, as a map. Like here, this is the city of Pittsburgh, just looking at the num total number of crimes. According, I mean, if you look at all the crimes put together, right, they, they, well, the highest concentration area would be in the center city, right around here. I mean, violent crimes, I think that, that was Homewood. This is back in 2005. Okay, so like here, you can create, you can create these charts We're using a variety of packages from Excel, SPSS, ARC, GIS, and others. I mean, Excel, that's probably the best known one. You know, it has some pretty nice graphics. SPSS and SAS, those are more for data analysis, but they do have nice graphics as well. R, it has very advanced graphics, but and it, and it is a free package you can download off the web, but it but it does require a lot of syntax. And of course, there's others, and then so if you save your graphics as a JPEG or GIF or PNG file, you can easily add it add it to your blog or podcast. Well, this is a little old. I, usually what I do in Microsoft Excel, I have to like copy and paste it and then save it as a, and then save the graph as a, and then save it as, a, as an image file we added. All right, I talked about R. SPSS is better for more advanced out, less user friendly. Okay, Microsoft Excel, you can't do really advanced analyses, but you can do graphics, and it's the most readily available. Okay, so here we have Gapminder Institute. They do provide a free, a free, like, graphics package that you can, you can use for you can use to show like international statistics or they do have they also have one just for the 50 states I'll demonstrate that later and then there's well this I'll show you the joy of stats clip that's a good introduction to it to Gapminder and this website track tracker that's around here like for they use a lot of advanced graphics to show the effect of like fracking and Marcellus shale drilling. Okay, this is another cutting edge graphic. This is this graph here is related to Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812. Like the width of this graph, well first the, the brown line that shows <laughs> shows the path he took as he was entering Russia. The width shows you the size of his army, and as okay, this shows over time as they entered Russia, and you can see that the the line gets narrower and narrower. And the black line here shows the return path, and it gets narrower and narrower till there's almost nothing left of his army. By the time he by the time he left Russia. Okay, well, this is just an example of more statistical reasoning. Okay, some good statistical blogs here. I'll you, you I can I'll be happy to provide that you with that. Okay, so obviously when analyzing, leave no stones unturned. Okay, 
Now I'll show this little example here. Part of my own work too. I teach global health. And I know having the data is not enough. I have to show it in ways people both enjoy and understand. Now, I'm going to try something I've never done before. Animating the data in real space with a bit of technical assistance from the crew. So, here we go. First, an axis for health. Life expectancy from 25 years to 75 years. And down here, an axis for wealth. Income per person, 400, 4,000, and $40,000. So, down here is poor and sick, and up here is rich and healthy. Now, I'm going to show you the world 200 years ago, in 1810. Here come all the countries. Europe brown, Asia red, Middle East green, Africa south of Sahara blue, and the Americas yellow. And the size of the country bubble showed the size of the population. And in 1810, it was pretty crowded down there, wasn't it? All countries were sick and poor. Life expectancy were below 40 in all countries. And only the UK and the Netherlands were slightly better off, but not much. And now, why start the world? The Industrial Revolution makes countries in Europe and elsewhere move away from the rest. But the colonized countries in Asia and Africa, they are stuck down there. And eventually, the Western countries get healthier and healthier. And now, we slow down to show the impact of the First World War and the Spanish flu epidemic. What a catastrophe! And now I speed up through the 1920s and the 1930s. And in spite of the Great Depression, Western countries forge on towards greater wealth and health. Japan and some others try to follow, but most countries stay down here. Now, after the tragedies of the Second World War, we stop a bit to look at the world in 1948. 1948 was a great year. The war was over. Sweden topped the medal table at the Winter Olympics, and I was born. But the differences between the countries of the world was wider than ever. The United States was in the front, Japan was catching up, Brazil was way behind, Iran was getting a little richer from oil, but still had short lives. And the Asian giants, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Indonesia, they were still poor and sick down here. But look what is about to happen. Here we go again. In my lifetime, former colonies gained independence and then finally they started to get healthier and healthier and healthier. And in the 1970s, then countries in Asia and Latin America started to catch up with the Western countries. They became the emerging economies. Some in Africa follows. Some Africans were stuck in civil war and others hit by HIV. And now we can see the world today in the most up-to-date statistics. Most people today live in the middle. But there are huge differences at the same time between the best of countries and the worst of countries. And there are also huge inequalities within countries. These bubbles show country averages, but I can split them. Take China, I can split it into provinces. There goes Shanghai. It has the same wealth and health as Italy today. And there is the poor inland province Guizhou. It is like Pakistan. And if I split it further, the rural parts are like Ghana in Africa. And yet, Despite the enormous disparities today, we have seen 200 years of remarkable progress. That huge historical gap between the West and the rest is now closing. We have become an entirely new converging world. And I see a clear trend into the future with aid, trade, green technology and peace. It's fully possible that everyone can make it to the healthy, wealthy corner. Well, what you just seen in the last few minutes is a story of 200 countries shown over 200 years and beyond. It involved plotting of 120,000 numbers. Pretty neat, huh? Yes, that was from the BBC documentary called A Joy of Stats. That his name is Hans Rosling. He runs the Gapminder Institute.
All right, I'm going to demonstrate his his software right now. This is basically the same graph he showed you at the end of that video. You know, with uh, okay, like if I if I highlight here, this is the United States. Here's China. There's India. And, you know, you can download this for free from the Gapminder Institute. And, you know, it does have other types of statistics if you want to look at it. Like, you know, from life expectancy, child mortality, um, CO2 admissions, and plus a variety of other statistics. Is there anything like in health you'd be curious to look up? like crime statistics or, or let's see there's education we have here for the we have these types of measures for the economic data let's see society data they have murder rate per 100,000 people some war and peace variables like military expenditure murder, corruption, there's even a corruption percep perception index you can look up. Okay, well, here's murder. Is there a way to do life expectancy subtracting infant mortality? Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, let me see here. Child mortality, there's, let's see, if we go to health statistics, Causes of reform deaths. New, oh, causes of newborn deaths. I mean, well, that I don't know. I doubt it, but certainly you can always email the Gatminer Institute. <laughs> it has all these different things. So, like, like if you wanted to look at say I don't know okay well let's look at education maybe a little little more or gender how about gender equality ratio of girls to boys in primary and secondary education okay so now I, I, I change the variable this is income still on the bottom okay so this one group this one country down here is really low if we move the arrow over here, okay, yep, that's Afghanistan as the lowest. I mean, most of these countries are, I guess, perhaps, I guess maybe Bermuda. That has the highest ratio of girls to boys in the world. And their income is also higher than... Well, this is the United States right here. They're about, roughly about equal. Okay, I was just going to show, I just showed that for demonstration purposes. Okay, I decided just to look at uh, different, you know, different web statistics that are available. Like, all right, just, just for, just for laughs. I thought I would take a look at Donald Trump's Donald Trump's website. I know. Hope, hope that doesn't make some of you too nauseous. But okay, like here. Let me see here. Let me go back to. Let me go back to the page. Okay. So over here, like if you go to the main page. Yeah, so being slow. Okay, like here, here's his latest post. If you click on the number here, if you go on to any, any, you can do this with any Facebook page. You can even gather, so gather your own web statistics. You know, this is what they make readily available, what Mark Zuckerberg makes readily available. Okay, like down here, down here, this mil number 10,287,000, that's the total page likes. This, this is the level of engagement he has. 
about 1,980,000 are actually reacting to his posts or sharing it or clicking on them. That's what this means, people talking about this. This is the number of new likes he's had in the last week. So this, they give you this graph here. With uh, It's a pretty flat graph for, for this week. But then they show you this light gray one for last week. He, had, he was getting a lot more likes last week when he was shooting his mouth off. And so... So this is some, like, publicly available statistics. I mean, <coughs> they'll give you a lot more if you go to, like, if it's a site, if it's a web page that you're managing, okay, hopefully it won't take me too long to get to. <coughs> okay, like here, this is, okay, this is my personal website I'm bringing up right here. waiting for it to come up. It's being slow again. Okay, but here, you know, it does give you a lot more detailed information about which posts they're clicking on, which posts they're, you know, they, they give you that information. But, okay. But it's being really, well, it's being really slow. I don't think, I don't know if we'll have time to get into it. Well, that's, well, this is my Facebook page. That's my web, my Facebook page for my website. I, I just gave it, I just tell people, being a statistician is like CSI without all the dead bodies. So, that's my blog. Okay. All right, well. I think I might just move on to another page, move on to another demonstration while I'm waiting for this one to come up. Okay, I'll go into, I'll show you a little bit about Google Analytics. Because that one's taken forever. Uh, I got an old computer and it just seems picked a great time to freeze up on me. Okay. So like here, I mean, I, I, I can only scratch the surface of Google, Google Analytics. Like this would be an example of one of the dashboards. I mean, you can create your own dashboard with the meaningful statistics. Like this map is showing me where the visits to my to my website are coming from. Obviously, the number one, the number, the one with the most, the country with the most, uh, is United States. Let me scroll upwards. Like here, this tells me the date range I want to look at for I want to look at for for this page. Like I can, I could, if I want to look at, say, the, the whole summer up to today, I could go. So for this one, like, you know, you highlight this box, you pick June 1st, and then for this one, I can add today. By default, it shows, like, the, the statistics from the day before. So I can apply that. And that should bring me, give me an updated graph. So, okay. So here I have this, basically this is called a graph for unique visitors. That's just, like if I have the same person visiting me over and over again, it would only be counted once in that graph. Okay, these are like brand new visitors. This graph here, I mean, they, they look virtually identical. So this tells me that the brand new visitors and the unique visitors are virtually the same. 
So like here down here you have the visit visits from the type of browser. That just that tells me like okay, Google Chrome, that's the most popular one. Okay, my website's on Blogger, which is owned by Google. So that that tells me that maybe they're favoring my, their own, they want direct traffic. Google might be directing traffic through, you know, to, to their, own, their own web browser. Please tell me if I'm giving you information overload. <laughs> okay, like here, this is what you call the bounce rate. Okay, this is one rate you like to have low for your website. Right here, you know, that just means that somebody who comes to the web page and leaves right away, that's called a bounce. So, uh, like the percentage of the total visitors who, who show up and then leave right away, that would be, be called a bounce. Okay, this graph here, okay, the, okay, okay, the, let me see here, this graph here, okay, this is just the total number of pages they're visiting when they come to my website, like right here, like that would be on this graph here, this would be like, so like, like, so basically, this would be like the, about 10, pa 10 pages per session. They're, they're viewing when they come to my website. Like here, if you move your cursor, you move, you move your arrow key over the data point, it gives you the specific statistics for that day. Like here, the average... Like on this website, I mean, on, on this axis here, they give you the, aver the average number of times there, I mean, the average amount of time. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little over my, confused myself. This is just the total amount of time, or the average amount of time they are staying on the page when they visit. Okay, I mean, we could easily spend spend a whole day talking about how to use Google Analytics. Like they give you all this audience statistics. So like here, like statistics about your audience. So here, this is the same graph as before, the number of sessions. Like down here, they give you the average. So the total number of sessions, the total number of users, okay, the total number of pages they viewed on this website when they come. Okay, this is the overall average number of pages per session. And the average says session duration is around, well, it's almost, it's almost exactly one minute. This is, well, 59 seconds. Okay, so here we, I have a bounce rate of about 50%. Okay, might be about par for the course. Okay, the number of percentage of new sessions would be about 90% or new sessions. And then they give you this graph here, a pie chart showing the returning visitors to the new visitors. I mean, ideally, we would love to have about an equal share of both. You know, we'd like to think that people who visited the site before are coming back. But it is what it is. So then down here, 
you can get you can get demographics of your audit well some demographics here like okay like what language their browsers use okay obviously English is the biggest one you can get it by country so for some reason I got 21 21 people visited from Iraq don't know what that means hopefully it's not Isis <laughs> and okay I can break it down by city as well okay like here for some reason there some of these have no city okay I got a bunch from Boston Johnstown Pittsburgh was sixth and and these other Oshkosh Wisconsin so okay well plus there's a there's other things that are less interesting but suppose I want to know what pages people are visiting exactly what pages we can go to the behavior site we can go to this behavior tab on the on the left we can click on overview and then just wait for it to come up okay so here okay this is these are web statistics on like how long are they like the number of page views I'm getting on each individual page okay so like we had about 800 total visitors and they visited about 2485 so so then, you know, that's where we would get the number of pages per session. You just divide the two. Of these, we have about 1,012 unique page views. And the average time on a page here is about half of their session in about 32 seconds. Okay, I did get a little bit of AdSense revenue. You can track that as well the page impressions, add units viewed. So like over here, I scroll up a little bit. We can, like you can add a secondary line to see how the trend, how the trend comes. Okay, suppose we want to see the average time on page. See how that compares to the number of page views. So now we can add a second line to this. Okay, like I'm seeing right here, I'm seeing there were, on Wednesday, June 22nd, there were 13 page views, but they were staying on the page for an average of two minutes. So something about that day, something caught their eye. So obviously you would like them to stay interested in your content. So this tells you the level of interest in your content. Okay, I had a peak on July 14th. Okay, we had 30, 379 page views, but only 55 seconds. Well, 55 seconds was the average time they viewed it. So they may, they may, there may have been, you know, people like looking at it on their phones and then going looking at it on their browser. So it's still a pretty good level of engagement on the page. Okay. So then we have these other things like the bounce rate. You know, like you can look at these mini graphs, the percent exit. Okay, now they have this down here. This shows you the top pages with uh, the top number of page views. Okay, but they give you the URL. So like here, I posted, I one of my friends was, he went on national, like he went on local media talking about how he'd been abused by a priest 
when he was a child. So I, as, a, as a favor, I posted it about it on my website. So if we want to break these statistics down by page title, that might be more meaningful than just, just the URLs. This is, say, the URL for his story on the web browser. This is the mobile URL. So we can combine them by doing page title. That's my classmate's story of abuse. He had 503 page, total page views over this time period. And it's 20, that's over one, little over 20% of the total page views I had over this period. So, like down here, you can get a full purport, get more detailed information about each page. Okay, that's the same graph as before. Okay, they're presenting the pages and their statistics. It, this is more in, uh, in table form. So like here, I can see, like you can sort, like over here, right next to the word, you can even, you can get, like if you click, go over a question, there's a question mark next to each column. So if you go over here, this tells you how Google defines that variable. Like page views in this case is the total number of pages viewed. Pretty simple. And then, okay, we go over unique page views. That's how, that's how Google defines it. The number of sessions during which the session specified page was viewed at least once. A new counted for a unique page view is counted for each page. Okay, and you can do that for each of these. Let's say, suppose I want to sort by average time on the page rather than rather than the number of page views. Okay, I did a blog post about the Civil War. And this, the, high, the one with the highest average time per page is nine minutes, but it only had two, 10 page views. So, all right, there might be some special. Are we running out of time? We are. Okay, well, I'm, I'm pretty much at the end. I, I hope, are, are any questions? Or, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I hope I, did, I hope I didn't overload you too much with information. I, I know, I realize I crammed a lot in here. And where can, where can they get hold of you if they do have some additional questions? Well... His, his website's oh, listed right on the top there. Perfect, all right. I just emailed it to myself. Oh, nice. oh you did? <laughs> CSI without dead bodies. Plus, okay. okay, like on my... I'm on Twitter at CSIWODB. That's an abbreviation. You can, get, you can find me on Twitter. So, so uh, did you? Okay, so does Google keep analytics on all sorts of web traffic or just for stuff? Like well, you're, you, you're using their blogger. Yeah, well, here, like, they do have a built-in stat counter, but that also includes spam traffic. Like, I get a lot, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell about, like, sorting out the two. Right, but do you have to pay for them to do no. the analytics service? I think, I think like, well, I think on, I read somewhere, I don't know if that's still the case, but Google Analytics, say, for the first, for the first, say, 5 billion page views you get, or visitors, it's free, but that, uh, don't quote me on that. But, yeah, I mean, it is free. I mean, you'd have to have a really popular website to get to that number anyway. Um, yeah, if you have any additional questions, feel free to, if you're going to be here tomorrow. You're, are you going to be around tomorrow? Unfortunately Oh, you're not. not. Okay. Um, so, any, any, so any questions? So, did you like the part about Gapminder? Or? Yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting. I liked that a lot.
Okay, well, there's that. lots of stuff. You, you can use that in a podcast or... So, maybe...